<laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> Hello, and it is so nice to see you for this beautiful eight minute mini mini pod. Mini mini pod, Katie. Always wonderful to see you. Oh my God, listeners, I wish you could see what I see right now, <laughs> which is Katie in her childhood bedroom. Yes, it is. I am in my childhood bedroom. I am sitting at my high school desk um, right now, which says it, in pencil on one of the walls, it says, this is Katie Morell's desk, only hers and just hers. This is my like writing from sixth grade. Maybe I guess I used it in middle school as well. Also, I'm not sure if you can tell Karen and listeners, I'm sorry that you won't be able to say this, but the border, um, the wallpaper border in this room is vintage Disney characters. This Stop is, <laughs> this is, and this is quite literally a shrine to my uh, my childhood self. Truly, like there actually is no difference. It is very odd to walk in here and um, be a forty one year old woman, and I'm not joking that nothing has changed. Like legit. So yeah. Oh my god, I so from here that just looks like flowers. Like oh the yeah, wallpaper border just looks like floral. And I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so uh, um, tasteful. No, actually, you can Taste. see that uh, it is. Oh yeah, so, Snow White, Seven Dwarfs. It is um, Bambi. Is that Bambi? Bambi. Yeah, there's some definitely canceled characters <laughs> in there. Also, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, there's um. Also, my sister's cat is I think hiding under the bed, but it has been really nice because my sister she she rescued a cat. From the streets in San, er, in San Francisco, in uh, East Lansing, when she was at Michigan State years and years ago, and um, my mom took her in and has been living a happy life ever since. Her name's Sage, mm-hmm. and um, and it's nice actually having her around because I would love to have cats, but Tyler's allergic, so I'll never have cats. But anyway, but yes, I am. I'm in my my childhood bedroom. Would you like to explain what just happened <laughs> before we hit record, friends? There was a situation. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, the amazing situation that started this call. So first of all, to take a step back, we are recording this on 420. 420, okay. Yes, 420. is the birth date of magical people in our lives. Yes, it's Ginger Buddha's birthday today, isn't it? Yes. Ah, Corey, love you. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a fabulous day. As far as I know, she is. And it is also your mom's birthday. Which is the reason I'm home. Yes, it's my mom's Ugh. 70th birthday. And uh, she is one of the biggest fans of this podcast and loves you, Karen, as does my dad. And so uh, she had to say hello right away. It was. I was very excited when you both, like, it's one of those things where, like, I have an image of you in my head, right, of what you're going to look like when you come on Zoom. And yeah. Seeing your mom there, which is like, oh oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) I had a fangirl moment with your mom. Happy birthday to you. I hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'm so glad you're there. And she was so sweet and like, so clearly so excited that you're home, Katie. I'm so so happy to be home. I really am. It's a nice thing. Like I thought about it a couple of weeks ago when I was in, you know, recovering from surgery and I'm like, I need to get out. And it's like, I can be here and just like, chill and visit my dad too and it's just nice it's nice to be back it is I haven't been I haven't stayed in my childhood bedroom though because every time we come back if I come back with Tyler it's always going to my dad's house we visit my mom but like because he can't be around cats so it's been four years since I've spent the night in my childhood bedroom which it's a vibe I mean I wish we could have like it's there's (laughs) I don't know what to say about it (laughs) I mean, okay, so listeners, if you're a longtime listener, you might remember, and this is a deep cut, um, in one of our very early seasons, how I told Karen you the story of the fact that I have a cedar chest at the end of my bed that contains, um, among other things, the hair of my great-grandmother in a paper bag. Yep. No, and I thought of that today before (laughs) I knew that we were going to be talking I knew that you were home and I was like, oh my God, I wonder, I wonder if the bag of hair is still there. (laughs) I literally thought it today. Oh my God. I love that. We're so on the same page. And so, so yes, right before we hit record with my mom in tow, I showed you Frida's hair. How was that experience for you, Karen? (laughs) Oh my God. Well, are are we still friends? Please say yes. (laughs) 
I mean, it, there was foreshadowing because I had thought of it. Yes. But then I enjoyed also the, not a tussle, but it was just like, your mom was like, oh, it's Frida's hair. Let's get this out there. And you're like, no, don't take it out of the bag. <laughs> like, I, know. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to show you the bag with the hair. My mom wanted to take the whole fucking thing out. And I'm like, how are we going to get it back in? It's just loose hair. Like what? No, I, mm. God, I just threw up in my mouth. Loose hair. I'm never going to say that again. Anyway, <laughs> that's gross. Loose hair in a bag. Yep. Yes. Yeah, she died. What did she say? She died when she was 84 and it was in 1971. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, I I still would love to get to the bottom of why we have that in my bedroom in 2023, but that's not for today's eight-minute podcast. Right. So. And- I, the other thing I thought of today, I feel like I mentioned this tweet on a previous episode. One of my favorite tweets of all time was going to your childhood bedroom as, as an adult is a little bit like reporting live from the scene of the crime. Yes. That's so real. That's so real. Yeah. So, oof. I mean, it's just a mic drop. Like I'm, I'm sitting in carnage. <laughs> like I look. Like... Oh gosh. How are you? How was, how uh, you know, midweek, midday for you? Ooh, it's been a busy day. It's mm-hmm. been a weird week. It's been a busy day. Apparently we're in double Aries. Oh, so it's double Aries. I think the moon is in Aries twice this month. There was something else. Oh, and there was an eclipse. Oh, that's right. There's an Aries eclipse. That's right. And then I think Mercury retro, Mercury, Mer, mm. Mm, if I could say it, Mercury retrograde hits tomorrow, the 21st, right? Oh, no. Is that true? Uh, I don't know. That's I don't, hard. No, I don't. Mm. Yeah. Lots of fiery batshit energy. Oh, my gosh. So much. And so for Tori's birthday eve. Ooh. Yes, we went. She had bourbon. I had Diet Coke. We went to a local restaurant and wrote down intentions that kind of harness the energy of this special Aries something, something. I I love that. Right. Our, you know, witchy friends were just like, this is a a very important time. And I was like, it's Tori's birthday Eve. Let's go out. So that was great. It was great to set intentions and oh. So my sorry, I'm looking out the window and my compost bucket is being picked up by compost bucket. So it was just <laughs> great to set intentions. And it is one of the things that made me think of today's idea, which is the idea of manifesting some shit because it's a good time to do it. It is. That's so it's so it's like a potent time in the universe. I love how you fit everything so seamlessly together, Karen. You are the queen of seamless segues. That is actually pretty amazing. I also love the idea of setting intentions the night before your birthday, even if it's an Aries triple moon eclipse, Mercury retrograde, whatever the hell, but or not. It's like intention setting. Always a good idea. Yes. And looking back and looking forward, like, what do you want to leave in this age? What do you want to bring into this age? It was great. I mean, and I, it's not my birthday, but I also did them and it was really, it was great. I love that. I love the, what do you want to leave and what do you want to bring? That actually makes it such a more holistic experience rather than things aren't good all the time. I need to bring in something new. It's like, no, you can actually appreciate what you have as well. I love that. That's awesome. Okay. So do you want to introduce the, uh, the topic? I was even thinking we could go one for one and have three, three things each we could I don't know just an idea oh okay 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 I'm into it so uh listeners the theme idea this week is Katie and I revealing our guest wish list as a way of manifesting actually getting these people to be on the pod someday yes I love this and I also think that it it is really real I mean we joke about it but like why not we are an established podcast by Spotify standards and we are, you know, we're doing, the, we're doing the thing. We're almost at 150 episodes. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're three years, in, almost three years in. Seriously. We're such badasses. Who wouldn't want to come on our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got to think about this. Um, okay. Do you want to go first? 
Yes. Well, I mean, there's the first one. So I actually, oh, I should share this with you because we have, we have a spreadsheet. We have an air table of oh, that's right. our, like initial, like OG guest wish list here. Yes. Um, that is true. We'll put it in our Zoom chat. And of course the first person on it is Michelle Obama. Yes. Oh, I also can't get into the air table. Sorry. <laughs> So great. Okay. Um, no, it's all right. We're good. But yes, Michelle Obama. Yeah. I mean, needs no introduction. <laughs> Why would she not want to come on our podcast? She has so much wisdom to impart. I think if she was to come on our podcast, I would I would want her to talk about literally anything she would want to talk about. I don't I don't care what she wants. If she wants to recite the recipe for her toasted cheese sandwich that she has written about. And that's the whole thing. And there's not even a hello and goodbye still gold. So I will tell you what we wrote next to her name. And I don't know at what point we wrote this, but it says Michelle Obama colon. Tell us about when you're stuck in the shit and how you get out of it. Oh, nice. I mean, that's even better. <laughs> also tracks with her new book, The Light That We Carry. Highly recommend it to everyone. So that actually is very much on brand for her right now. There you go. It's not exactly how she says it, but you know, <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay, Michelle, is that your number one? It's also my number one. She is my number one. She is my number one. Yes. Yeah. No, a thousand percent. Who else would I want? This list is pretty good. There are 37 people on this list. Wow technology i wish i could read it but it's okay <laughs> it's okay well i could share my screen oh there you go oh wait let's see oh no i can't no you can't because you need to be the host so i know i know everyone listening this is riveting <laughs> content right now <laughs> this is this is how the sausage is made everyone <laughs> this is amazing there we go okay go ahead oh okay please <laughs> i can do it take that technology we don't Yay. need you okay you... Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is a great one. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the second person on this list is Alicia Keys, <laughs> <laughs> which I love our ambition. And like, yep. I think, I mean, Alicia Keys is amazing. She also came out with a book like a year ago. Or oh. maybe, maybe it was a couple years ago, but I heard it was excellent. And so if she's open, you never know. That would be amazing. I will also point out that at least two people on this list we have actually legit had on the show. One of them is Kate Silver. Yes, yes. The and Nyella, Nyella Warren we actually had on. Oh, she was so great. I remember that. That was a long time ago. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, I have, I have someone from this list. <gasps> Ashley C. Ford. Holy <gasps> crap. Have you ever read her book? No. Oh my gosh, Karen, it's so good. Okay, so Ashley C. Ford, for those of you who don't know who she is, she is an amazing writer and she wrote this book called Somebody's Daughter. It's a memoir of her life. And the memoir is about her getting to know her father who spent the majority of her life incarcerated. And then wow. he gets out when she's like, I want to say in her 30s. And she, I think he's, well, I don't want to, you know, say anything about it right now because I don't want to, no spoilers, but it is so beautifully written and there's so much humanity in it. And she's just like one of those writers that like you kind of like feel like you're enveloped in like a cocoon of love and acceptance and beauty when you read her stuff. Honestly, she's like incredible. Wow. I would be very excited to have her on the show. Okay. I love it. I think I just went and I did too. Sorry, Karen. I'm I'm Sorry. ruining my own my own game. <laughs> Quite all right. Um, I she's not on this list. They are not on this list. But I actually would love to have Glenn and Doyle and Abby Wan back on. Would you really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because God. they interview people all the time, and I know they've been interviewed a ton. But I I I would get super meta with like how they decided to do a podcast, what the process has been like, how they get. Like they're not professional interviewers, but they get people to reveal incredibly personal things in some cases for the first time. So very curious. 
I love that. I love that. And I also love the angle of being meta about it, talking like podcasting with another, other podcasters about podcasting. <laughs> like, because the thing is, is you've said this to me before is like that our podcast is actually quite similar to their podcast. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I think we started in first. But... I mean, we did, but now they do it twice a week. So they've lapped us, but oh. like in, in, in... <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Imagine getting lapped by Abby Wombat. Yeah, exactly. I would love to talk to them about that. And also like, if they would be willing to say that, like how they get, how they do a podcast with each other as they're married, they're a married couple. Yes. And it's like, like I get it they're both professional and I'm sure that they you know have a certain thing that they like put aside if they're in a fight or whatever on a show but like if you're doing something twice a week even once a week you're not always in a good mood like how do you deal with that with like your significant other next to you and you're working with them and you're you know being created with them I love that idea I mean this is a good list oh okay Lizzo (laughs) Okay, here's the thing about Lizzo. So I love her so much. And I think that like just talking to her about her story, I haven't heard her on podcasts and maybe she's been on them and I just haven't seen her. But like, I would love to know her story because like her lyrics are so revealing in terms of like having been so criticized, like horribly criticized. And then for her to come and rise above that somehow and find this love for herself. It's like, I mean, her lyrics are so incredibly inspiring, but I would love to hear like maybe some more detail about how she's dealt with that. Like how, how she gets that, um, you know, that strength inside of herself to kind of, I think it would just help everyone, including everyone. I mean, including me, I guess, but yeah, I would love to hear. (laughs) I completely agree. That is a great perspective on Lizzo. Like the confidence and the self-love, the unconditional self-love. Truly unconditional. That's something that like I knew because that's like her shtick, but I didn't know really until I saw her live. And I was like, oh, this is no joke. Like this is not a, this is not a shtick. Like this is actually who she is. Like it was, I mean, you've seen her too, I guess. So that's why, yeah. Okay, do you want to say the last one that you're interested in? Ooh, okay. Oh man. Oh, do I have to pick just or or five? I don't. I, yeah, I, I'm. Don't want to limit. <laughs> also, we both have to go. Um, I know. Okay, my last one's a tie between Emily King, the R and B singer I'm obsessed with, yes. and Esther Perel. Ooh, those two are so good. What are the advantages of each? Like, what would you want to talk Ooh. to each one of them about? I mean, Emily King, I just like, how does it feel to be amazing? Like that I really would just like dissolve into just like a puddle. That would be, I almost don't want to because I just am such a fan and I just would get dumb about it. (laughs) Esther Perel, I would love to hear her perspective on relationships and intimacy, which you and I have like tiptoed around and we're like, oh, we need an expert to talk about. Like we, you and I have decided we need a proxy for that conversation. Correct. And so I feel like she is the perfect person to offer observations and insights about intimacy, intimacy in as we age, about different kinds of intimacy. I'm, I I mean, I just love everything she says. I love that idea. I also, if she would ever, and I don't think she would, because I think she would have already if she was going to, but like talk about her own relationship. Like that would be so amazing to hear. Like, how does she keep it alive with her significant other? And yes, I would love that. She does. She like drops in. Yeah. Specifically around intimacy. She, I just saw something where she drops in sometimes stories about like, she had like, you know, they've been married a really long time and they had like, they were like, just like being at each other over breakfast. Yeah. And it was like, I'm having a really hard time right now. Well, I'm having a really hard time right now. And like, just like hearing her talk about it, like she's a psychologist. She's a grown ass woman sniping at this grown ass man over the toast. Like <laughs> she's yeah. very real. <laughs> That's so real. That's so real. Conversation. Wow. Yeah. I also need to listen to her podcast, which is something about getting started or where, where where should we begin where should we begin yes 
Oh man, it's, it is really good. There's where should we begin? And then she has a one about work called how's work, I think. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Well, this is a good list. It's a great list. And I also think it only scratches the surface because some of the people that we didn't mention are also amazing. So tune in next time listeners for our next eight minute pod on manifesting celebrities after we've obviously interviewed all of the people that we've mentioned. Correct. Yes, obviously. Well, this has been really fun, Karen, and I think it's been longer than eight minutes and I don't care because I'm just happy to see you, but I know we have to go in 30 seconds to our next meeting. So yes, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you all for listening and we will see you next week. Uh, oh, I can't stop it because you're the host. <laughs> oh shit. Oh wait, oh, how do I make you the host? No, it's okay. Uh, I can make, hold on, um, make host. Okay, this is amazing. Or oh, I'm not I'm now the host now. Okay. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Wait. <laughs>